Uh, for more on today's sell-off, let's bring in Tom Lee from Fundstrat Global Advisors. Uh, Tom, good to have you here. Obviously, you've uh, you've made a real uh, franchise of actually talking about the interplay of COVID and the markets and how you think it's best to play it uh, and trying to handicap whether the market has already priced in the latest or the coming news. How are you treating today's market reaction and, and what do you think about whether we should be taking the uh, this new COVID potential threat seriously as an economic event? Hi, Michael and, and Sarah. First of all, happy Thanksgiving or happy post-Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, you know, today's obviously a fierce reaction, and the markets are always going to be a little worried about things that change visibility and things that can cause policymakers to panic and then eventually consumers to panic. And today is, is a great example of that. The VIX has already risen 45%, and the tenure has come down dramatically. So I would be in the camp that I think today is much closer to marking the actual trade below. Uh, our technical strategist, Mark Newton, has called for a three to 5% correction that was gonna start and then end in early December. I I would say this is the hallmarks of this is actually today. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm not a scientist, but there has not been a, a variant of COVID that has actually truly changed the direction of the economy. So I know this is very alarming, but, you know, investors need to take it in stride too. Yeah, uh, well, there's certainly no doubt about that. I mean, obviously, you know, even maybe in the best case scenario, we have a couple of weeks where we're not really sure how to assess, uh, you know, the science behind this new variant and things like that. Uh, but do you think the market uh, is also essentially reacting to, you know, where it had been already? In other words, this is a, a certainly a very direct uh, excuse and a reason to, to drive this one day market action. But uh, do you actually feel as if when you see crude oil crack below $70 a barrel uh, and, and you see a lot of these macro moves that seem as if they're kind of losing their previous trends or ranges, is that something that's, that you feel as if can, can feed on itself? Uh, oh, yeah. It's, uh, Michael, that's a great point. You know, once a sellout starts, nobody can really determine uh, the, the depth and, you know, the fierceness and the speed. Uh, but today, you know, the timing is awful. I mean, it's a shortened trading date in the U.S. with very few people actually at their desks. In Europe, it's a shorter session. I, I mean, if I was a policymaker and I was worried about oil prices and the SPR was kind of like a last bullet that didn't do much, this, you know, this obviously helps make people panicked and it's causing oil to be lower. But do I think oil is $60 in 2022 because the economy has screeched to a halt because of this variant, I mean, it's possible, but, you know, what investors have to keep in mind is, you know, South Africa's vaccination rate is like 24 percent, and the number of cases reported is 2,400. Uh, so even though this new variant's a large share, it was, you know, the cases were over 30,000 in the summer. So it's, uh, look, it's a, policymakers are panicking, and generally when policymakers panic, that's when investors want to actually step in. So, so just to be clear, you're saying buy, buy the dip. What, what would you be buying? Yes, uh, I, I'd be, I mean, I don't want to sound like uh, I hit the, the Jim Cramer button, but yes, I, I think we're still on track for a fierce December rally. I think it's going to be led by whatever is getting stop losses today. So, you know, Art Cashin talked about this morning, you know, the cyclicals, I mean, casinos and hotels selling off and retailers. I mean, these are companies that dramatically cut costs and they have huge demand and investors, uh, I mean, unless the entire world decides to buy bonds, stocks are still cheaper than bonds. You know, you're paying over 50 times to buy a 10-year. You're buying, you're paying, sorry, more than that, 65. You're paying 50 times to buy an investment grade bond. I mean, the S&P, you know, at 20 times our 2022 estimate, I mean, it's still a bargain. Yeah, um, I mean, there was a, a couple of signs here that, you know, the, the market sort of, um, stopped going down at the Dow one, down 1,000 on the Dow and the Dow one, down 100 on the S&P uh, level right here. What signals would you be looking for to suggest uh, that, in fact, either the fever is starting to break or, in fact, we're, we're in for a little bit more pain here? Because I think everybody remembers that Friday when COVID first started to be brought to bear on the stock market uh, back in February of 2020, the market was down 1% today. That, that Monday, we actually uh, kind of lost more ground. So I, I, clearly the muscle yeah. memory maybe makes people nervous. 
Correct. Um, Michael, that's a great point. Again, like, I, I don't know the future. So I'm saying things based on our historical, our look at past cycles and, you know, our evidence-based work. But one thing that's always a clue to tell you you should be a lot more scared is when the VIX term structure, the futures curve, really starts to invert. So in other words, it's pricing a near-term volatility greater than out-term, a negative premium, essentially. Today, I'm staring at it it's still a positively sloped VIX futures curve. So we're, even though we've got a spike in the VIX, the, the, the market is really saying, this is a, a, I don't have liquidity day. It's not that I think there's big calamity that we're facing for the next few weeks. So I would say the VIX signal today is, this is the bottom, but you're absolutely right. I mean, anything could happen over the weekend, you know, and you know, there could yeah. be a meteor strike as well. And that would be, a, you know, three strikes. Yeah. No, <laughs> let's, let's hope not on that. I hope not. But, but Tom, I. I just wanted to bring up the Fed because that, that's part of the story here. And already after, you know, if the, the past few weeks and days have been about a pricing in a faster taper and a sooner interest rate hike, already that's starting to unwind. We're seeing that in the money market fund. So, so May was 50-50. Now they're taking off June and punting it to September, at least if you look at where the market is expecting the first sure. interest rate increase to come from the Fed. And I wonder, clearly you're seeing that, that kind of reaction in the bond market, but is that if that continues, and this, if this does cause some sort of economic event or consumers to, to pull back, when that might become a good thing for investors if the Correct. Fed isn't so quick to uh, pull back on stimulus. Yeah, that's spot on, Sarah. I mean, as you know, the, the bond market's been fighting the Fed over the summer, uh, really pushing uh, the markets to show liftoff way sooner than the Fed has been explicitly saying. But the reason for that was uh, inflation was super hot, like supernova hot. And they and there was a belief that the global economy was coming back, you know, roaring back. Well, I mean, if you got panic like this and commodities are down, I mean, to me, uh, I think that the bond market is now having to realize that that was a crowded trade to bet on liftoff. So you're absolutely right. I mean, if anyone thinks that, that the Fed is now going to be pushed into raising sooner, this this is a huge amount of cold water. Yeah, not a lot of inflation talk today. Tom Lee, very valuable to have you on a day like today. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me.